Ladies and gentlemen, it's currently Monday, November 14, 2022, and as of right now, the best chess player in the world is named Levy Ross... No, I'm just kidding. Is named Magnus Carlsen. He's been the best player in the world for over a decade at this point, but he was not always the world champion, believe it or not. In 2013, he won the world championship match against Vishwanathan Anand from India, and in that match, the penultimate game that clinched him the title was spectacular. It was so spectacular that he did it without a queen. You say, what? And you've probably seen that game before. If you haven't, well then welcome to the spectacular uh, spectacle. Spectacular spectacle. Jeez, I shouldn't record video intros before finishing my coffee. Uh, this game was incredible. Now, as you can see here, Magnus Carlsen with the black pieces does in fact have the queen. He's not playing without the queen, okay? Because that would be illegal, disrespectful, and frankly stupid because he would lose. But what you're about to see is nothing short of incredible. Vishyanan began this game with the move d4, right? Magnus plays knight to f6, Vishy plays c4, and we have the move e6. So Magnus is going either for a queen's gambit declined or the move bishop to b4, which would be the Nimso Indian. The only reason you do not begin with d5, because after c4, there is e6 and knight c3 is a slightly better move order. Against knight c3, you'd like to play bishop b4, which is exactly what happens in this game. Black has not committed the d-pawn yet, but rather fights against white's very natural central expansion by developing pieces rather than developing pawns. All right, white plays f3. f3 is known as the Khmoch variation or the Samish variation. And the move e4 here uh, is still very much the idea. You temporarily sabotage the natural development of your pieces. Uh, you weaken the dark squares around your king and you would like to play the move e4. Now, uh, Black has played many things here over the years. Black has castled and allowed this. Black has struck back at the center with the move c5 and then b5. This is a very explosive line that just leads to all sorts of crazy positions and kind of like a spider web of pawns being tangled together. Magnus in this game played the very principled d5. You say, Levy, you just said he doesn't want to play this. Well, it's a slightly different situation here because white has played this move f3. Now the move e4 is impossible because, of course, black would simply take. So d5 is a very logical move. Now, what does white do seeing this? White attacks the bishop and basically says, look, your bishop's intentions have not been fully demonstrated. Are you going to take or are you going to retreat? If you stay here, you get your bishop trapped. And that is not how Vichy would go on to win this game. That would be a very tragic conclusion to the world championship aspirations of Magnus Carlsen. So after the move a3, Magnus decides to capture and then continues the assault on the center with the move c5. As you can see, White's position looks extremely stupid, <laughs> right? I mean, these pawns look just in the way of all the pieces. The bishop is blocked. But White actually has an okay position. And he takes on d5. You might say, why did he not take this? Triple isolating your pawns just isn't good. These pawns are, they have no b and d neighbors. And they will just be eaten like, you know, like it's Pac-Man. Or Pac-Woman in the case of the queen. So instead we have C takes D5, E takes D5, and this move E3. Now again, visually this looks incredibly stupid. I mean, it just looks like somebody with 2,000 less rating points is playing on both sides, right? But no, these are some of the best chess players in the world. The reason this position looks dumb, as you might say, with all the pawns like this, is because there actually is not any substantial danger to white. The king is, believe it or not, totally safe on a square like F2, where it oftentimes does go. Uh, and white will just slowly develop in a non-traditional way and then play e4, g4, and so on. As I like to say, uh, if a beginner plays like this, it's very bad. But the best players in the world are allowed to bend and break the rules of traditionally kind of upheld standards of the game. So Magnus here, rather than castling or playing knight c6, plays the move c4. He just shuts the door completely on the light squared bishop. White will now rely on either e4 or g4 to kind of attack on this side or break open the center. Uh, Vichy plays knight e2. Magnus develops his knight to a traditional square. And now we see this move g4. All of this has been played before. Uh, this looks kind of ridiculous, I know. I've said already, it does in fact look ridiculous. But it's all a thing. And seeing as though black will likely castle this way, it sort of makes sense for white to begin very active operations over here. And as I've already stated, the king is totally safe on f2. Because if you really look at the black position, none of these pieces can get in over here. So black will have to rely on something else, like maybe the f-pawn or something like that. 
So Magnus castles. Um, and you may say, well, why did Magnus see this coming? Why didn't he just go that way? Well, because that's not a whole lot better. I mean, there's still a direct line of assault over there on your king. So that's not really going to work. So castles, bishop g2. And this game is going to develop in the following way. White will completely abandon this square. Okay, this rectangle is absolutely not where white would like to do any sort of battle. Because white has nothing there. White's queen side has been shut down. White will, will rely on g5 and e4 and the king side. This is where white will play, okay? This is where black will play. And it's going to be very interesting. It's very rare that you have a chess game where kind of the sides are interacting by not interacting whatsoever. Just sort of like a race, all right? For who, you know... Uh, for who's going to land the strike first. And that's why we see knight to a5. All right, the knight is going to b3, and frankly, it cannot really be stopped. So Vichy can't do anything about that, so he castles. Okay, Magnus gets the knight to b3. Vichy moves his rook. But okay, now what? Okay, the knight made it to b3. Uh, sometimes I like to say knights are better than bishops, right? So is this a good trade for black? No, it's actually a horrible trade because that was black's most active piece and it just moved one, two, three, and now four times and took something that hasn't moved. So if one of your pieces has moved four times and you take a piece of equal value that has not yet developed, that's just logically not very good, right? Because that piece took part and didn't take part in the game at all and almost a quarter of your moves were played with a piece that no longer exists. That seems like kind of a time sink. So the knight will just hang out on b3 and now Magnus plays the move b5. Well, if it's not clear already, he would like to fight on a certain side of the board, right? a5, b4, and this three pawn formation versus the incoming four pawn formation, you do the math, black will be left with some sort of passing pawn there. And by locking down the queen side, black has forced white's hand into playing aggressively at some point. So Vichy plays knight to g3, and now the move g5 is ready. He did not want to rush maybe with the move g5 because the knight would come here, and actually that's a problem. If you play f4, uh, you kind of lock down your ability to play on the light squares, and I just take advantage of them. Now black has completely plugged the gap on the light squares. So that is why the knight goes to g3 first. Magnus uh, has the option here to prevent the move g5. He chooses not to. He just plays a5. He just basically lets Vichy do exactly what he wants. Look at this, g5, avalanche, g5. Now the knight goes back, and this can be defended with a pawn, a pawn, or it can be defended with a bishop with the very nice move, e4. And the avalanche is just beginning. We have g5, we have e4, we might get e5, we might get f4, f5, f6. I mean, this position might just get from okay to completely horrible for black. So... Hopefully Magnus knows what he's doing. And this is nuts because thus far, he's basically only using a knight. Look at the rest of Magnus' pieces. This is ridiculous. This is like how Anderson Silva in UFC used to stand with his hands down. It didn't work against Chris Weidman, and that was a big turning point. But he, like, he just stands with his hands down. He could just head movement, just get out of the way of the punches. Just spectacular, right? And now Magnus plays a move here, which I have just said makes absolutely no sense for Black. Magnus Carlsen breaks all the principles that I have just described and trades his only active piece for the bishop. Now all his pieces are on the back rank and somehow the position is still in the balance. How is that possible? How can this position be in the balance? Yes, you can argue white is a bit better, but I would say visually it looks like white is so much better. White has this pawn attack just coming in. What does black even do? I can't see a world here where black survives the next 10 or 15 moves. But that's why you're here. That's why you haven't clicked off the video yet. Or maybe, maybe I look funny or I don't know, I smell bad. Well, actually, you wouldn't be able to smell that. Um, I don't know, but I've clearly kept your attention and let's keep going. Now Magnus plays rook a6. Rook a6 is a self-explanatory move. Magnus wants to kind of protect the sixth rank just from anything that should arrive there in the future. The problem is the rook cannot defend against the pawns. So here comes e5. So now white is just a few steps away from basically creating an impenetrable blockade on the black position. And when you blockade the black position, the pieces cannot communicate because they have a lack of space. They're, la they're lacking oxygen. What happens when you lack oxygen, right? Bad things. So very dangerous position here. Knight c7. What? I mean, where is the knight going, right? Like, I don't understand. I keep describing that white has a very simple plan, f4. 
You're not gonna stop me with anything. And the second that you try to go here, like Black might say, oh, that's it, I've stopped the attack. No, en passant. If you don't know that rule, welcome to the chess world, very tricky. Uh, Google it, E-N-P-A-S-S-A-N-T, Google en passant, you'll thank me later. Uh, and now the Black King is wide open, right? So F5, the Queen will get in, the Rook will get in in the future. Very bad position. So just visually speaking, doesn't this just look awful for Black? Awful, right? I mean, Magnus has got to do something with, with one of his pieces when he plays B4. He's trying to create some counterplay. Now, Vichy's got to address this, okay? If Vichy continues with F5, the pawn will probably get to B3. This just looks very unpleasant. Computer is not thrilled about it. Vichy decides, I'm going to take with my A pawn, okay? And now here, I'm going to trade his rook. I have the option to preserve my rook for the attack, but I don't like that his rook is also preserved, so I'm going to trade off his rook, because I think his rook is actually more valuable to the position than my rook. And now what are we going to do? We're going to play F5. Vichy's just all in. I mean, this is just all in. His plan is F6, Queen F4, Queen H6, Queen H4, Queen H6, and mate. This, 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 this. How does Black stop this? How has Magnus let Vichy do everything that he wants in the position? And there, what? Like, what is happening? Again, it's way too late for Black to fight back. Way too late. Look at the eval spike to plus four. Way too late for this. Boom, boom. The queen is going to get into h6. I mean, this is not what you want. What does Magnus do here? How does Magnus address this massive assault and coming toward his king? He just plays b3. But that pawn's not gonna, I mean, that pawn's not going anywhere, right? That pawn's not, there's not nothing there. Just, it's always gonna be taken. But it's a problem. It's a problem for Vichy. And you might say, why didn't Vichy take on b4? Well, had he taken on b4, he would have just allowed the, a new knight into the game, considering that one just died. And this pawn is still annoying. So Vichy just decided that this was better, because the knight cannot get into the game. And now Vichy plays queen f4, and surely he's winning, right? I know we have this e bell bar there that's kind of spoiling the surprise. Surely white is winning here with f6, knight h5, queen h4. There is no way Magnus is going to get out of this. But like I just said, Magnus is a combination of Anderson Silva and Khabib Nurmagomedov. Think about that. That might mean nothing to some of you who don't follow mixed martial arts. One of them hangs on you like a wet towel. One of them will dodge every single one of your attacks like it's the Matrix. All right? He is the most annoying type of opponent because he sees through the bluffs of the position. And he just moves back to c7. I'm going to highlight a piece for you that hasn't even been used. Because that's why you clicked on this video right here. Yeah, let's keep an eye on that. There's f6 and there's queen h4. That's it. Vichy must be winning, right? I mean, finally. Finally, we've gotten to the spot. He has to be winning. What does Magnus do? Knight back to e8. I mean, this is absurd. This is completely absurd. At the very least, white cannot lose, right? White just can't lose, because White's attack is way too strong. He's completely made it impossible for Black to move. Now, there's a couple of plans here. White can play Knight to e2, and then Knight to f4, and try to get in on one of these two squares. But suddenly, Black is coming down the board, and the thing about Black's position is, somehow it's so resilient that you can just start eating all of the White pawns. And, some, and, and like because Mate is covered, there's no, there's no real danger. And if White plays Knight e6, there's still... Despite some threats, no way in. Queen h6 to get to g7, rook f7. Black is defending everything. I mean, this is completely absurd. And black is the one winning at the end of the day. So Vichy plays the most direct move, which is queen h6. And now b2, okay? Now, in this position, if white suddenly just goes all the way to b1 and says, aha, I've stopped you, queen a5 and black wins the game. If you take queen a1 check, wins the rook. If you don't take... I play this anyway, or I take this, and then, like I said, take all the rest of the pawns and I'm winning. So, now that Vichy is this far, he's gotta go for it. Again, the move knight e2 is strong for white, but rather than playing the move knight to e2 and trying to take a step backwards, Vichy plays the move rook f4. Now, you saw the eval bar there have a little panic attack. It just plummeted and then went back up. What did it see? Well, Vichy allows b1 queen. A full promotion, because the idea is rook h4 and mate on h7. Now, in this position, the move bishop f1 is required, okay? 
This Shabbat phone is required, and the only way to stop me, try to find it, by the way, it's completely, it's completely absurd. I can take a sip of my coffee in the meantime, which I should have drank already before recording. The only way to stop this attack is to sacrifice the queen by getting in the way. It's one of the most ridiculous defensive measures I've ever seen in my life. Ever. And the point is that after take, here, here, black is just in time to defend. A position is equal, apparently. I don't know why it's equal. White can, like, sacrifice everything and somehow it's a draw. I, <laughs> I Don't ask me. I'm just glad I wasn't playing the game. Um, but that is the idea, right? But Vichy says, wait a minute. Why do I have to do that? If I play knight f1 instead, this was Vichy's idea, okay? His idea was that knight f1 makes more sense because after this, this, he doesn't have to take with the knight. He's going to go here and knight e3, and he's winning. Vichy found a way to win the game because he's going to go here and here. And if this, then this. And if this, then this. And I don't know, if you don't take, you play like queen d7 or something, I just come back and I mate you. It's just game over. So Vichy did it, right? Vichy did it. B1 queen, you don't need to go here, knight f1. Unfortunately, it loses. A cold shower here for white in the form of not blocking the attack against the rook and the queen, but simply preventing the rook from going to h4. The auxiliary idea. For a long time, both players were finding this and this kind of absurd interference queen sacrifice. But by going knight f1, Vichy opened the diagonal to the h4 square. And now, black would simply do this and be up a full rook. And the position is completely hopeless. Completely hopeless. White doesn't have enough material anymore. You say, Levy, you just said knight e3 and checkmate. Yeah, no, no, now, now, now black is attacking first. So, queen e1 was played, and Vichy Anand actually straight up resigned. This was his third loss in the match of 2013 against Magnus Carlsen, and the very next day, he essentially conceded. Uh, the match was over, and, uh, and Magnus Carlsen was crowned world champion for the first time in 2013. Now, I just want to point something out in this game. Magnus Carlsen played this game. Now, Yes, there was this queen. Yes, it was allowed. It didn't have to be allowed. But if you think about this, this queen was a pawn. Every promoted queen starts out as a pawn, right? Well, let's rewind the game. Magnus Carlsen played this entire chess game without moving his queen. He developed in the center his pawns and his knights. Then he castled. His knight galloped into b3. Then came the pawns, then came the retreat and the dance of his knight, the trade of his most powerful piece. Magnus played this game in a way that shouldn't make any sense. Like, look at his piece play. Vichy in this game did everything right. He played a perfect game. He played chess the way it's supposed to be played. He, all his pawns coordinated beautifully. He restricted his opponent. He put all of his opponent's pieces on the last rank of the board. And yet, one pawn was his demise. It was supposed to end in a draw with best play, maybe. But because of the necessity to win in this match, he took a little bit too much of a risk and he ended up blundering. And folks, I just want to show you something. This is two moves before the game is over. Magnus not only never moved his queen, he never moved his bishop. Magnus played this entire game without touching his queen. That is so crazy. I know the position demanded it, but that's so crazy. And the, the whole thing ended after queen e1. He didn't move two pieces. As a bonus, he didn't move two. Ridiculous. One of the most ridiculous feats I, I ever saw. How does a man do everything the right way, develop all his pieces, create a blistering attack on his opponent, and Magnus dodges it, like, just flowing through air. You know what I mean? Just like nothing. Calm, defensive measures. One mistake by White on move 28. The game ended, and so did the World Championship match of 2013. And that is how Magnus Carlsen won a game without ever using his queen.
Yes, I know there was this other one made. I know, but like... Come on. This is ridiculous, right? Anyway, um... You should still use your queen. If you try to play like this, only bad things will happen. If I try to play like this, only bad things will happen. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Get out of here.